finance reports here and our analysis. So in, in our analysis, we have our reports, which can give us the detail about the payouts that, that are going to be happening. And then we looked at our finance reports and our payouts to see to pull the information in. So these payouts right here represent multiple sales that are happening on the third party platform that are being grouped together in one particular payout. When I come over here into QuickBooks, then I'm not going to have a system where I pull in every transaction and try to enter a separate sales receipt for every customer and every transaction, not pulling in all that kind of information. We're only going to pull in the summary of the information that's going to tie into the payouts. And that's the, and then and then we're not going to be dealing with a perpetual inventory system in that case as well. Okay, so then if I go down here into commerce, let's just take a look at the overview. We've got three tabs up top. I'll close the hand boogie overview and then the orders and then the payments. Now note that most of this stuff stuff, if I go to the overview is just for appearance, meaning it's not actually pulling the information into the QuickBooks system. Uh, so you got to keep so it's kind of giving you a nice look that is similar to the look that you would see over here on on Shopify. It's just mirroring the same data in a different kind of format over here, but it's not adding to your QuickBooks. So that's what this first page uh, is basically doing. It's giving you kind of a summary of that information that's coming directly from your third party store like a Shopify. Then you have your channels over here. So here's the channel. Now, some people could have, of course, Shopify and Amazon and, multi and eBay, and you might have multiple Ebays and Amazons and whatnot. So then you would list out the different channels uh, would be listed on the right hand side. We've just got the Shopify. If you wanted to connect a sales channel, then you can go into the connect button up top and you can connect multiple sales channels. The number of sales channels that you can connect you know, could be limited to the subscription uh, that you have. And then you've got this, will, which will take you a shortcut to the transactions and the profit and loss. And you can take a look at some tips on down below. Then, and by the way, if, if I look at my Shopify for like this analysis, you can see this analysis, you know, is similar to what they're pulling in uh, to QuickBooks here. So in any case, then I can go into the orders. Now the orders, once again, are not actually the things that are going to be posted to our system. This is mirroring the orders that are over here that are just pulling in each individual order. We're not, if we were to record each individual order into QuickBooks, that would look something like it would pull these each individual orders and into like a sales receipt uh, kind of thing. That's not what's happening. It's just showing you some of the detail within QuickBooks. So you don't have to go to Shopify to see some of this detail. So for example, if I go over here and I look at my reports, for example, and I look at my total sales and your reports could differ depending on what, you know, how much you're paying on Shopify, what tier you're in, but here's, you know, each of my uh, transactions, the individual purchases that took place that are pulling it in here, uh, 1001, 1002, 1003, and so on for those individual items. But again, these aren't actually recording anything. Then we've got the refunds and back to the sales order and then the payouts. So these are the payouts that are actually happening. So this gives you a, a summary of the payout. The payout represents the money that's coming out of uh, Shopify and is going to eventually hit our bank account. So we expect the payout to eventually go into our checking account. That's going to be the idea. So for example, if I go to the Shopify store and look at my payouts, here's that 715 uh, of the payout. Here's the 715 here. If I want to see the detail of that payout, it's pulling in the detail to help make the journal entry. And just like what we did over here with our with our journal entry, when we had like the two, you know, the 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 components of the journal entry that we pulled in from Shopify, it's doing the same thing here. We've got the sales side of things. Here's going to be the transactions that are included in that particular payout. And then we have the expenses side of things. And this is showing 
uh, the Shopify expenses. So that's similar to what we had over here when we looked at uh, the two the two reports that are gonna be in play here. If you go into your analytics in like a Shopify and take a look at the reports and we look at the total sales report, then I don't think it's including that dollar right there. So here's the, you know, the gross sales, the net sales and the shipping and so on. And then this, uh, it's really not including that $1 right there. So it comes to 870, uh, 870 is, is this amount right here. And then uh, if I go back on over here and I go to my payouts, which is in the finance and the payouts, then we can see that all of the all, all of those transactions are included in this payout and then they charged a fee for the payout fee which is you know the the fee for them to to, to do the financing of it and, or to facilitate the transaction and that comes out to that 155 so those are the two sides that they that quickbooks nice and neatly pulls into this little review uh item here so you can see it there which is nice but this still isn't posting anything so then uh, if I want to, you, you have uh, transactions to review. If I go into those transactions, if I say go to those transactions, they then I, they took me up here from the commerce tab up to the banking tab. Now in the banking tab, we have our bank feeds, which we connected to the bank. So we would expect that $7 to eventually hit the checking account. We would, we would see that, uh, that amount that we were talking about 715 I think it was hit the checking account it would be in here and but we're trying to break out the the detail of it in a similar way like we did with the with the manual method so if I go to the apps tab this is where it's going to store that data so now you've got your apps tab here's the Shopify store it's, it looks similar kind of like to the bank feeds if I had multiple channels I can toggle between you know the multiple channels here and then you've got a similar layout for review reviewed and uh, excluded you can change basically your date range here and here's the detail of the transaction so it's got the sales it's got the shipping income and then there's the subtotal and then the selling fees so you can see this lump sum is going to be the 715 that's going into our checking account but it's breaking that information out basically kind of with a journal entry format here not in the bank feeds but in in the app transaction i can i go to more of the detail here let's take a look at it in this case and this takes us back to that detail page that we looked at before to give us the actual sales that took place and the expenses now before i record this let's just take a look at how we can adjust the mapping if we if we want to see what it's going to do when we when we actually record this item so let's go back down to the commerce tab and i'm going to close the hamburger and i'm going to go to the to the overview and each one of these uh channels we're, is going to have a drop down up top so if i hit the drop down i can go into the settings so let's take a look at the settings so up top we've got the general settings deposit account uh the checking account payment account the checking account payout confirmation how would you like to confirm pay payments this setting takes effect for future transactions the default is manual because i'm going to say hey look i want to see these in that that transactions tab and then i want to manually say okay I, I approve of that transaction pull it in it's probably recommended to do that for a while until you get to the point that you are comfortable and then you can automate the transaction because like with the bank feeds, nothing's really affected.